energy is all around us and comes from a variety of sources. One of the most important sources of energy is the sun, which is the ultimate source of energy generated by wind, fossil fuels, and water. Although the sun produces more energy than our needs, we mostly rely on coal, oil, and natural gas, among others. These sources are not renewable, meaning they will eventually run out. In fact, if we keep using these non-renewable resources at the current rate, we may run out of oil and gas in about 50 years and coil in 115 years. Not only are these non-renewable resources going to be exhausted, they also polluted our planet and contribute to the climate change. The sun's energy, on other hand, will not be used up for the next 5 billion years, making it a renewable resource. Other renewable resources such as wind and water can also be used to provide energy. Even with all these energy sources combined, we still get less than 1% of solar energy that reaches the Earth. The sun was mankind's primary source of power, and with a little work, it may also be the last. Two major approaches in this regard are solar photovoltaic and solar thermal technology. PV modules can directly transform sunlight into electricity. There is another type of photovoltaic solar panels that concentrate sunlight and are thus more efficient than conventional photovoltaic panels. In contrast, solar thermal technology converts sunlight into heat, producing vapor that flows through a steam turbine that generates electricity. Sun rays can be used in the daytime to produce energy. But what to do at night to generate energy? Part of energy produced during the day can be stored for night use. Thermal energy storage is cheaper than electric storage. Let's look at different types of solar concentrators. There are four categories of solar thermal power plants. Parabolic throw power plants, Fresnel collector power plants, central receiver power plants, parabolic dish power plants. Parabolic dish power plants are not widely used. Increasing the efficiency of solar thermal plants requires increasing the concentration and the land use factor. There are limits to achieve this target for all types of existing solar concentrators, such as shading and blacking. For the solar tower to increase concentration, more mirrors are required. Using a higher number of mirrors, increasing blacking and shading. To tackle these issues, the tower height should be increased, which burns even more birds flying over the power plant and increasing wind effects. As a result, the cost of power plants grows. Increasing the height of the tower also faces engineering eliminations. In order to increase the concentration in the linear Fresnel reflector, as in the solar tower, it is necessary to increase the number of mirrors. Using more mirrors enhances blocking and shading. To avoid these problems, the receptor height must be raised. The optical efficiency of Fresnel collector is lower than that the other solar concentrators. With increasing receiver height, the optical efficiency of Fresnel collectors decreases. Regarding a parabolic throw collector, as the collector aperture increases, the shading grows. 
a workaround is to set up the collectors at a greater distance from each other. Accordingly, the land use factor decreases and the plumping increases, leading to enhanced heat loss. In addition, opening the rise in the collector's aperture, the height of these collectors increases. This augments the effect of the wind on these collectors. Consequently, a more reinforced structure and a bigger sun tracker are necessary to face the wind force. For all existing solar thermal power plants, there are limited ways to increase its concentration and the land use factor. In recent decades, there are, have not been a significant innovation in solar thermal power plants. This has led to the higher cost of electricity generated by solar thermal power plants than that by photovoltaic panels. Given that the rate of reduction in the cost of electricity generation by photovoltaic cells has slowed down in recent years, one innovation in solar thermal collectors could make the electricity generated by these collectors cheaper than that by photovoltaic panels. At this moment, we are introducing the next generation of solar collectors that will having the advantages of existing solar thermal collectors cover their disadvantages. In the next generation of solar collectors, a flexible reflector located close to the Earth's surface serve to focus sunlight. As the reflector is located near the Earth's surface, the effect of wind force on the structure is reduced. For example, for conventional PTC collectors with the aperture width of 5.8 meters, the maximum height of collectors can reach up to 6 meters, while for next generation of solar collector with the aperture width of 15 meters, the maximum height of collectors is 3 meters. In other words, we are able to reduce the number of absorbent tubes. Also without creating shadows and blocking, these solar collectors can be brought closer to each other and have an excellent land use factor up to 100%, as well as minimal plumbing and heat loss. Because the land use factor of conventional solar thermal power plants is low and the land near the customer resident is expensive, conventional solar thermal power plants are building far away from cities. The excellent land use factor of the next generation of solar collectors can reduce the distance between solar power plants and urban areas while diminishing power transmission losses.